Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Steve Marinucci, Beatles Examiner columnist at examiner.com, welcoming you to yet another edition of our Things We Said Today show where we talk the weekly, uh, weekly highlights of Beatle news. Um, across the country from me is my co-host and host of Every Little Thing, Mr. Ken Michaels. Hello, Hi, Steve. Steve. How are you doing, Steve? Hi, everybody. You're cracking up. What are you cracking up for? I don't know. It's just you've got this this really soft voice starting Ooh, on the show. Yes, this, oh, okay. this soothing should I, voice. Should I talk? You should no. You, you <laughs> should hear me when I'm watching baseball games. It's not a soft voice. Okay. Not a very soft voice at all. Well, one, on once, phone, once in a while, pretend you're watching baseball when you're oh. on the show. <laughs> Yeah, if I'd have been watching the game last night where they blew it in the ninth inning, I would have probably you probably would have heard that voice. But anyway, they meaning the Giants. They meaning the Giants. Yeah. Okay, and probably folks listening don't know who you're talking about. So right, I'm a Giants fan okay. and a Red Sox fan. Well, that's, that's an odd good. combination. Right. Well, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, today we're going to talk about something that's been, that's been happening since the weekend, and that's the. Um, Paul McCartney, uh, the situation with Paul McCartney's Out There Tour, the cancellation of the Japanese uh, concerts, and the postponement today, officially, actually, uh, I wrote about it yesterday, um, of the Korean South Korean show, the first show that he has done. And this is really kind of, un- well, this is, as far as Paul's career goes, it's unprecedented to have this many shows postponed for illness. Right. Of course, in 1980, he he had to back out of the the uh, Japan tour after he got busted, and the only other time, or the most recent time, I should say, that he's had to postpone a show for illness was 2003 in Sheffield when he had to cancel the the second show there where he lost his, after he lost his voice. That's pretty remarkable. It is pretty remarkable. Um, so, so you're telling me all the shows from the Wings days. And the um, the seventy nine tour from from uh, the last Wings tour there, so eighty nine ninety well nineteen ninety three. Yeah, they the, never were. They, he never had to cancel from an illness. Well, as far as like I said, the most recent one was two thousand and three. Okay. I think somebody somebody I saw somebody write on Facebook that he did cancel another show um, about ten years before that. But in any event, he's never had to cancel this many shows before. Mm-hmm. And it's remarkable, especially at his age, especially for the fact that he does three-hour shows, that this has happened. This is the first time something like this has happened to him. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 I mean, it all started early last weekend when they moved the May 17th show to the 19th. Uh, and then the following day, they canceled both the Tokyo shows. And then I think a day or two after that, they canceled all the Japan shows. Mm-hmm. And it's just been one, you know, one thing after another. And of course, with every cancellation, there has been increasing concern on the part of the fans about his his health. Right. The latest information that, you know, I mean, there really isn't much to go on. And it, it, you know, if people are writing more than they, you know, intimating that they know more than they know. They don't believe yeah. me. They, they do not. It's always dangerous to spread word out there when you don't know what you're talking about. When well, you really don't have the information. People have some people have the tendency to pretend they know more than they do, mm-hmm. and nobody really knows where things stand right now. The only clue we have is from uh, uh, a telecast of Good Good Day New York, where the co-host Rosanna, I believe, Rosanna something. Call is a friend of Nancy Chevelle's and called Nancy and asked Nancy what his what he was how he was doing, and she said he was resting and recovering. So that's the only real information we have mm-hmm. as far as uh, this this virus thing goes. I will say I have a personal personal experience with viruses because about a year ago I caught one and I was up I was down for a week and I mean down for a week and. If that is indeed what Paul caught, and that's what you know, that's what they're saying he had. You know, it's very logical that you know this has really taken him out. And viruses are a funny thing because you can get it for a few days, you can get it for a week. It could last a lot longer. Somebody else pointed. Somebody else pointed out, and tell me if you 
if it made sense to you. In the video he did just after he got to Japan, he looked a little ragged, and I noticed. I did notice that. Going You're talking about there's bit. a there's a new video for Appreciate. No, no, no. Before he did the Appreciate thing, where he where he said he had gotten to, to Japan, there was a there was a a little very short clip. I think it was about 20 seconds where he said, "I'm here," and I think he I think he I think uh, Newman was in the Newman the robot was in it with him. I can't remember for sure, but. He did look a little, he either looked tired or he, he looked like he was starting not to feel good. Um, I hadn't noticed. Okay. He, he looked He looked a little, he didn't look his usual bouncy self in the photographs from the airport. He looked a little, he looked a little, a little tired, not too mm-hmm. bad. Yeah, and that no. may have been a sign of something going on. So well, I don't know. The viruses are not something to to uh, take lightly. No. And uh, certainly, the older that you get, the more susceptible you are to getting them. And that's and, and that's been very, you know a big concern from everybody, from the fans and obviously from you know the McCartney you know team about his age. And, mm-hmm. You know, uh, if you remember, was it two years, two year, two and a half years, or two years ago or so, when Paul got. Walk of Fame star, Ringo was supposed to be there, mm-hmm. and Ringo came down with a with uh, the flu. Uh, right. They called it. The flu. I remember they called it the flu, and um, there was a lot of concern about Ringo. And in fact, I remember after, shortly after he did an interview, and you could still hear his voice sounded bad. He did not sound well, mm. or did not sound completely back together. And of course, you know, since he's been, he's fine. But yeah, I mean, when you when you get you know into your when you get people that are in their seventies, there's a lot of concern, health concerns uh, about uh, their well-being more so than if you're younger. And that's been a lot of you know there's been a lot of concern. There have been I mean there's a there's a whole Facebook page called Get Well Paul McCartney uh, right. that that started out it started out, I think when I first heard about it on Sunday. It, Today is Wednesday. It had two thousand two hundred members. It's now got like fifteen hundred. It's exploded. Hmm. Um, so, and there's all sorts. Of, I mean, there's all sorts of Twitter messages going out. So everybody's really concerned, and with you know, obviously with good reason. Yeah. Um, and and like like we just said, it is pretty remarkable that in all these years this has never happened to him, and the fact that he puts on such a long show, it's always two and a half hours to three hours. It's so demanding on the body. I mean, people don't realize that if you go to a concert, you probably think, oh, they're having fun. And I'm sure they're having fun on stage. The band's having fun. But it takes an awful lot of work and stamina to be up there on stage for that long. And in the case of Paul, unlike the Wings days, he's singing every song. He's singing lead to every song. Right. So for him to be doing that on stage for that long, it takes a lot out of you. And it would be that way if you were 20 or 30 years old. But it just goes to show he's been doing this for so long, and he's so used to it. He must be, in so many ways, in great shape to be able to stand up on stage and do that for so long. Think back to the Beatles' days in Hamburg, (laughs) Mm -hmm. what was required of them back then. But for someone his age now to be doing that, you know, I'm I'm surprised that he still wants to do shows that are that long. Because it physically is demanding. You won't catch him saying that. You know, I think anyone who goes to see your shows marvel at the fact that he can be up there on stage for that long. And also, one of the things, and I think we've talked about this in previous shows, he's been very smart in the last several years when he does these tours because he spaces them apart. You'll notice that most of his shows, he doesn't really do two shows in a row, two days in a row. You know, he gives himself a rest in between days, in most cases. In most and, cases. He, he did not, that didn't happen here, those first two Tokyo shows were back to back. Right. So that was a rare, that was a rare um, instance. One thing uh, I wanted to point up uh, about uh, about the the virus thing is um, the story I did yesterday uh, uh, Tuesday about the uh, the nurse the interview with the nurse about him recovering from the virus and and I wanted and I did that and I you know it was funny I got some criticism from people saying well you really didn't tell me anything I didn't know. But the thing is that he is seventy. You know, he is in the seventies, mm-hmm. and and also, you know, I mean, there is a lot of concern, 
And the good thing, and she mentioned this in the story, is that he's in good health. And that's very, that's a, you know, that's a very important consideration. Had he not been in good health, then, you know, this could be a lot more serious. But, you know, fortunately, he's in very good health. I mean, there's all sorts of anecdotes of people running into him, uh, you know, in the gym, on the treadmill. And so he takes good care of himself, obviously, right. uh, like Ringo does, too. So that's going to that's gonna help. Uh, that's going to go a long way in helping him recover from this thing. To be able to, to be on stage as long as he is, like I just said, shows that he has to be in good health. Right. And then even when he's not touring, he keeps a very active life anyway. Right. So I mean, uh, if you watch the, the Something New documentary, and Abe Laboreal is talking about how he gets tired just watching Paul to see how much energy he has. Right. So I mean, it's, 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 it's insane. I mean, he's, he's really dedicated. There's no question that he is dedicated to what he does. And to, you know, to doing new things, which he's always seems to be doing, or, or you know, touring again, or, or whatever. So, you know, that is the fact that he's in good health is a is a really you know is a really positive thing from a re- recovering from a virus. So, also this other side of the tour, which is that um, obviously the fans in Japan and in in South Korea are very disappointed about this. But right. sometimes people don't realize, beyond paying for the tickets, there's also everything else that goes into seeing Paul live. Some people are out of town, and they were scheduling this to make it for Paul's shows. So that means, in many cases, there are hotel rooms that are booked. Right. Some people take air flights. You know, let's just say you live in China, <laughs> and Paul's not playing in China. Right. So those people, I'm sure they had air flights booked as well. Can they cancel them? Can you cancel hotel rooms? Yeah. Every situation is different. So, you know, it's it's not like it was in the old days when a tour was announced and everything was laid out in front of you and you knew these were all the dates that Paul was going to do. Because everything is announced pretty much in piecemeal. <laughs> and very often, uh, from the moment that it's announced... The tickets go on sale within a week. You've got to make decisions very quickly. Can you fit it into your schedule? I know in my case, and I know I've said this before because having lived in the New York area my whole life, I'm more spoiled than just about anybody because Paul, when he does play the United States, always tries to make sure he does some show in New York every time out, right. at least one show. Or if you're in L.A., you've got the, the same kind of benefit. But... Um, you know, this time out, he he booked one show in Albany. So I'm thinking to myself, should I wait until he announces more shows because he's likely to do something in Manhattan? You know, well, and you have to think that that's how it is now with, with a tour now. It's very hard to really, you know, prepare yourself and schedule yourself. You've really got to uh, make sure that you can make it for each show. And then it's a gamble. Yeah, when I you don't do. know that we've talked about this. Are you going to Albany? Yes, I am. Okay. I have tickets for that show. Because the reason why I ask is because because um, the word is that the shows that have been booked uh, up to San Francisco are it for this point. Okay. So. And you know something? Uh, really, we should Google this. I didn't bother to do that before this show, but mm-hmm. I remember reading that the Wings Over America tour really wasn't as many shows as you thought it was. Mm-hmm. I think it was in the 20s. You know, and he's doing 19 shows in the United States, and this is almost 40 years later. So right. he's still keeping up the same pace, albeit the shows are spaced out apart, so it's over a longer period of time. But it's it's really pretty incredible that he's doing as much as he is. And, uh, you know, to his benefit, and I really admire him for doing this, he always tries to find locations where he hasn't played before, figuring that the fans who have never seen him in that area definitely want to see him so or he'll he'll pick a city that he hasn't been to for a long time like pittsburgh this time right. um or was it st louis uh you know there's certain cities that he hasn't been to for many years and then he'll play there again so he's very much aware with every single tour you know to to pick some locations like i said he almost always does something in new york or la but then the rest of the united states he'll pick locations that he hasn't played either ever <laughs> Or hasn't played for a long time. 
or hasn't played since uh, the Beatles. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I just looked up the, uh, the Wings Over America tour. That was 31 shows. Okay, 31 shows. Well, it, but uh, several of them were doubled up. In other words, whereas he, where you were saying earlier that he doesn't do more than one show generally in a city, he did that many times, several times. Okay. On with Wings Over America. So there you All go. Right. All right, but still, 19 shows in the United States is a lot. Right, especially now, especially at his age. And, and and also, too, the logistics have changed since 1976. Um, there's a, you know, it's a lot more expensive. Sure. There's a lot more, the equipment, I think the equipment is probably, there's a lot more equipment now, I would think, than there was in 1976. Mm-hmm. So, um he shows the video before the, the video. concert. Mm-hmm. He always has the fireworks for Live and Let Die. Yep, yep. So, you know, although he d- he did have he did have a backup band with Wings, he doesn't have that now. As I mean, by a backup band, I mean he had singers. He had a bigger he had a bigger band than he does now. Obviously. Well, when you include the horn section, you mean right? Okay. But he also has you know he has uh, Wicks with a with the, um, the electronics and that. I'm sure it helps a little bit, but um, but yeah, I mean it's it's amazing that he's been able to do this for so long and not have something like this happen before. And uh, it was actually, uh, you know, uh, and my, you know, the question is number one, where he where he picked it up. We don't obviously we don't know how how he got sick. You know, maybe we'll find out eventually. Maybe he'll you know he'll discuss it. He apparently, when he arrived in Japan mm-hmm. on the 15th of May, that's when he became ill. Right. So and he, um, came, he, and he came. He came from what was Costa Rica was the show before that. So, but I mean, it, there's no way of knowing, you know, what where, how this happened. So, and, right. And we're not even going to try and go there and try and speculate. But now I can only imagine because Paul does not want to let his fans down. He's that's gonna, been obviously that's been the the big theme with all the statements that have come out with the cancellations that you know where he's put in his personal words that he's been very disappointed about the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, I, I'd imagine he'd do everything he can in his power to reschedule, probably after the the U.S. shows. Yeah, that's that's going to be an interesting situation. I you have I, I think you have a little more faith than I do that all the shows are going to get. Rescheduled. Um, I, I, given the you know what he may have in the hopper near the end of the year, I don't think that's going to. Ha- I don't think it's. I'm just guessing. Uh, and let me make that clear. I'm just guessing. I would say not all the shows are going to get rescheduled. I mean, I would think one of the st- shows that would get rescheduled would be Budokan because that was you know there was a reason kind of to play there, mm-hmm. and possibly the South Korea show, because he had never played there played there before. But, you know, who's to say? We don't know. We're not even going to guess. So, Okay. It's been, it's been crazy, and uh, we talked, we've talked before doing this show, uh, we talked before they canceled the South Korea show, and, and we were, you know, at that point, there was still no word that they were going to cancel, but Boom turned around and and as I wrote yesterday that you know they were going to announce it today and they did and um, it, we're just going to have to watch and wait and see what happens from here. That's going to be you know that's going to be the next step. Well, the good thing is that he doesn't do his first show in the U.S. until June fourteenth. Yeah, and that, so that that is a good thing because it'll give him time to to recover and to to rest up and. And I'm sure that's exactly what he's going to be doing. Mm-hmm. The question is where he's going to, you know, where he's going to go. Whether he'll go back to England, whether he'll go to Long Island, don't know. We'll we'll find out, I suppose. Right. But yeah, he's got until the 14th, and then he'll have he'll have a, a lot of days off. There's no. Two, I'm looking down the schedule now. There are no two shows together mm-hmm. in in the U.S. Uh, he has at least one day off in between every show. Oh, I take that back. Uh, between uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and Jacksonville, Florida, those are back-to-back. But other than that, they're all 
there's a lot of time off. Right. So. Well, if anything, this only reinforces how it can create a, a very bad situation if you if you book a lot of shows back to back. If something does go wrong like this, and I'm sure Paul's just uh, so surprised that this even happened because it's never happened to him really. I think everybody everybody was surprised. Uh, everybody is kind of have been caught off guard. There hasn't been it's been surprising how little uh information has come out on the website which usually hits uh I mean after the two Tokyo shows were postponed, nothing that has been said about the rest. Everything came out on the Japanese website, the Japanese tour website. And then today with the South Korea thing, that was uh issued through one of the tour uh, promoters. So it's it, yeah, it's kind of weird and uh, somebody else has been pointing out to me that uh, there haven't been a lot of stories about it the media and there haven't been a lot of newspaper stories I mean obviously I've been covering it and you know it's been mentioned a lot online but the newspaper newspapers uh, my local newspaper the Chronicle hasn't even mentioned that he's canceled all the shows hmm. so I don't know well I'm just looking on the internet and it's one of the major stories on Yahoo Mm-hmm. So it gets publicity. It's been yeah. It, it certain it hasn't been getting as much as I you would think it would though. But in any it makes event. you realize how superhuman this man has been most of his career. That's true. Let's just be grateful that he's been so healthy all these years, and let's hope that that continues. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's been, this is you know if nothing else, I think I think the the whole shock of this thing has kind of freaked people out because you know he's been so steady and so together as far as doing this you know as far as these shows he's been so dependable hmm. but, you know when these when these um you know when these tours have been booked you just you just knew he was going to be there and all of a sudden for this many shows one show i think could have been you know people would have kind of sloughed it off and forgotten it but we're talking now five shows that have been canceled and that's you know over a two-week period Hmm. And that's pretty stunning, especially the way things rolled over and rolled over, and and uh, you know, so but it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens now, if he you know when he rests up, and and uh, it'll be interesting to hear more how he's doing. Yeah, and and how or what he will do when he follows the U.S. tour, if he right. is going to make up for any of those shows. Right. So um, yeah. And if anything, it also makes you step back and appreciate, no pun intended there, all the people in Paul's age group <laughs> who are doing this kind of thing. Because when you are, like we said, the older that you get, you can't take anything lightly. If you get a cold, you got to take care of it because it can result in something worse. Yes, you, yes, you can. So uh, yes, 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 it can. You know, one thing. One thing also that we all missed out on was the Newman was the robot. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if he's going to bring the robot to America, because that was one of the, supposed to be one of the highlights of the Japanese shows. Right. Well, for people that are wondering what you're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, Paul made a new video for the song Appreciate, and he's got a robot in there named Newman. Right. And um, there was a promotion that started um, right when Paul arrived in Japan. They had pictures of Paul with Newman greeting him at the airport. Right, and they released the the robot that week, earlier that week, they released, I guess before he actually got to Japan, they released it in Japan first, and they released it worldwide. And um, I have to say, uh, did you like, the, did you like Appreciate? Did you like the video? I liked it. I think it kind of moved slowly. You know, I liked I, the idea I, it was, of it. It was a little too strange for me. Um, I wasn't real, real taken with it. It was just, it was just weird. But, I don't know. You know, the the thing that's kind of strange to me is that several weeks ago, Paul gave an interview to a station in um, Los Angeles where he said he was making a video for early days. And then he posted something on his website asking people to submit stuff for a new video for Save Us. So now there's a video for Appreciate. And I haven't seen any videos yet for early days or for Save Us. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's true. That's interesting. So I don't know if maybe plans fell through on the other videos, but he, you know, Paul doesn't like to say things in in his interviews and then not have them happen. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I wonder what's going on there. I don't know. 
I don't know. I did put on uh, New the other day. I hadn't listened to it for a while, and I did put it on again. And it was like uh, listening to an old friend again. So I, I love it. You know, I, I listen to it all the time, especially since I play it on my radio show. Mm-hmm. It just sounds so fresh and contemporary. I love the fact that he used the four different producers on there, and he he gets different sounds from from all of them, and appreciates sounds different, and it sounds very modern. Right. I'll bet you if uh, you just played it on the radio and you didn't announce who it was, a lot of people wouldn't think it's Paul McCartney. And I like that. Hmm. You know, I like that effect. Yeah. I really would have loved to have seen what he would have done with Newman. And that's too bad that uh, we're not going to we're not gonna possibly see it until America, if unless he doesn't do it in America. I'm sure th- there's a lot of thinking going on now because of this whole situation. Hmm. Yeah, well, the video, in case you want to see it, is on Paul's website. It's also on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's just basically, it all takes place in a museum, and uh, Newman, the robot, is like a, a patrol watcher over the museum, and uh, there are humans in the museum that are just still in the exhibit, and then uh, when Newman sees Paul, he plays a guitar and he comes to life, and then he leaves his exhibit and all the other figures come to life. So that's right. basically the whole idea behind the video. But it's it's definitely different. I love the fact that he's still making videos. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. have to do it. So just something else to enjoy from him. Right. And also, we didn't even mention the fact that because Paul was about to play Japan, they put um, a deluxe version of New out in Japan, which included the documentary of something new and some other bonus features in there. So he was really looking forward to playing there. And in fact, there was a TV special that was broadcast in Japan of one of his concerts there. Mm-hmm. So he really enjoyed it the last time he was there in November. Yeah, so, I've, seen, uh, I've seen the TV special. I mean, they did some pretty incredible stuff for him. Yeah. So, How did uh, Paul and the band sound? They sounded good. They sounded good. There was a lot of tape stuff. They used some older stuff, too. It wasn't all new stuff. I mean, new as in brand new, <laughs> yeah. as opposed to... The title knew. Right. But, um, so, anyway. All right. Interesting. All right, so, that puts a wrap on this show, and uh, let's hope that uh, when Paul plays the U.S., he will be in fine, strong, robust shape. <laughs> yep. Yep, and we hope he uh, gets better very, very shortly. Very yeah. Soon. So, if any of you would like to get in touch with us, we have our own email address here at uh, this show. And it's things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. If people want to get in touch with just Steve, if they want to bypass me and completely ignore me, what's the way to do it? The way to do it is to write Beatles Examiner at gmail dot com. Just like it sounds Beatles Examiner. Okay. And we also have a Facebook page. I have a Facebook page that I'm on almost all the time. Uh uh I have pages for all my Columns. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on. I'm on a lot of things, but to basically Twitter and Facebook, you can find me. Okay. The Facebook pages are for things we said today for our show. Right. There, and your, there's also a fa- uh, things we said today group that you're w- welcome to join, and um, where we'll talk about the show. And you have you have a page. Yes, I do. I have a Facebook page under Ken Michaels. There's a picture of me with uh, my wife and son and Todd Rundgren. That's how you'll know that it's me. There you go. So uh, please like me on Facebook. And I have my own website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. And uh, there's plenty of things to delve into on my website. There's interviews galore with people connected to the Beatles. Lots of authors. Lots of the same people that we've interviewed on this show discussing things that we didn't discuss on things we said today. And there's always trivia every single week, and you can win some great prizes on there, and occasionally there's some special contests as well. So uh, always visit my website because you never know what's in store. There's always a surprise or two that uh, you just might find every time you get there. Again, it's KenMichaelsRadio.com. So there you go. All right. This has been fun. It's always a lot of fun. I'm Ken Michaels, thanking all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, one of these days we got to put the outtakes together. <laughs> There's plenty of those. <laughs> I know, that would be crazy. Anyway, this is Steve Marinucci saying, we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>